I'm Kurt. This is the engine out of my 79 Pontiac Firebird that I uh, blew up over a year ago at Wisconsin Dells burnout competition doing this. I know this car. Yep, we're going with it. So I made it back to town with the car and the trailer, put it up on the hoist, and then this happened. So first up on the hoist, and it appears the oil is leaking directly from the rear main seal. We'll soon find out why. And as expected, antifreeze is running out of the oil pan. Oil coming out, but that is how much antifreeze was in it first. They try to separate out. She's broken. So after finding the engine completely filled with antifreeze and most of the oil had leaked out all over the inside of my trailer, um, I kind of got discouraged by that. Put the car back in the garage after I pulled the motor and I haven't touched it in over a year. So today I'm gonna take it apart and find out what I actually broke uh, and see what the damage is. More than likely, I'm guessing the engine's completely trashed. A um, little bit about it, it's a uh, 60,000 over four Pontiac 400. Um, it's been together, well, it was originally built 23, four years ago, somewhere around. Um, as a carburetor is already loose here. Um, it's basically my first fast car. Uh, when I first put it together, it was running like a 13.2 in the quarter, which by today's standard isn't really fast, but 20 years ago, that was pretty quick. And through a couple different changes I made throughout the years, I managed to get it up to a, or down, I should say, to a 12.4 at about 109 miles an hour in the quarter. Um, Last few years, all I've been doing with it was burnout competitions. Um, I expected it to blow up. It wasn't a very streetable engine. Uh, it didn't like highway speeds. It would run pretty warm if I was running down the highway with it. And I always knew I would have to fix it sooner or later. And I thought, why not blow it up rather than take apart something that works? Assuming that with the 60,000s overboard, the block's going to be done. The crank and uh, the mains and rods were ground 30 30. So, most of what's in here has been machined to a point where it's probably not going to be usable again. I do have another 400. I also have a 389. However, Pontiac parts are pretty expensive, and I could probably do a better, cheaper LS than what Pontiac would cost to put it back together with Pontiac. However, I do like Pontiacs. And like I said, I have another 400 and a 389. So one of those options may end up winning, just depending. I also have a Vortec 350. Not that I want to put a Chevy engine in it, but I could put that in with just basically an intake manifold and a camshaft change and it would run pretty good. I have another transmission that would bolt right up to it because I'm pretty sure the transmission in this is smoked too. Um, but like I said, I've kind of been putting off taking it apart Get it done. Oh, 
shoot. Problem found. Well, I didn't have to go too far in. Um, as you can see, my valve must have broken half. I snapped the head of an intake valve off and it dropped into the motor. Uh, I don't see the locks. <laughs> Not that that matters because they came out obviously after the valve head had broke. So this cylinder is going to be catastrophically damaged. With the amount of coolant that went through there, I'm almost sure I punched a hole in the block. Um, but yeah, that's 100% where my failure came from. Uh, you'll see on the other side of the motor, I actually was having issues with my valve train that was wearing out the rocker arms. Um, I had broke the tip, like the roller tip had came off on my other rocker arms, which are this style. And I only did one side because I had some clearance issues. And I wonder if I screwed that up by not taking the heads off and getting different valve springs. So this might be my failure. I had contact where I had to grind the backside of the rocker arm so that it didn't touch the retainer. And it's quite possible that that's what happened is when the valve spring was shutting, I might not have had enough clearance on one of my rocker arms and I completely trashed the motor because of it. Well, it's one reason to rebuild it. Um, I'm gonna go grab the other rocker arms so I can show you why I replaced them and show you the other time I had a similar problem with this. Okay, so a little bit about why we have different rocker arms on each side. Um, my valve spring retainers were rubbing make sure you can see that we're rounding off the edges of the rocker so i bought these scorpions to replace a couple because the pins and the rollers were pretty bad shape uh, yeah this one's really bad this one's worn almost all the way into the pin and the reason for that is the stem length on the tip was too short for these rockers and the retainer was rubbing on the rocker arm from the last time I changed the cam and the springs. And I had found this and was concerned about it and was gonna replace all the rocker arms to try and correct it. But when I went to put these on, I ended up having to clearance the inside here. Well, let me pull this off and I'll show you. make this fit I kind of ruined these rocker arms in order to clearance it myself which in theory this should work fine and it clears the rocker completely and I don't actually see contact here this is where I ground it out so I'm thinking the head of the valve hit the piston because I over revved it uh, like I said I was wide open running it pretty hard and it just shut down. So, but that's the reason there's two different rocker arms on there. I didn't want to destroy the other half in case I just want to buy six new ones or uh, eight new ones to replace the ones that I did end up grinding on. But I knew I was going to have to do something different with these valve springs eventually. Like I said, I was beating hell out of the car trying to blow it up. So, succeed. Unfortunately, 
how this broke, I think is going to end up being really catastrophic. I'm pretty sure we put holes in the block. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cylinder heads off so we can see what the damage is inside. So here it goes, I'm going to pull the head off, I got all the bolts out, um, let's see how bad I destroyed this motor. My guess, the head of that valve punctured the piston, which put a hole through the block. Everything's going to be completely wiped out in junk. Um, let's find out. Um, oh, I got too much silicone there, don't I? Nope, there it goes. Oh, it's bad. It is bad. Wow. All right. Um, me. <laughs> That's some damage. Let me just set this up here. This is what we're seeing. Um, the head of the valve. Wow, there's one of the retainers. How the heck did that get? Oh, I bet it was sitting right here. It was probably sitting here when I lifted the head and it fell down in because there's no way that that got inside the chamber. But. I took the head of the valve and bounced it around and it punctured the cylinder head. So the block may, well, I let a bunch of water sit in it here and this is pretty rust pitted now, but the block might actually not be punctured. It might have just destroyed the cylinder head and the piston. But yeah, that's some definite carnage. Uh, oops. Well, I don't know at this point. what really is at fault. My assumption is I over revved the motor. Um, that's, that would be the most likely scenario. I don't see any other piston to valve contact. Well, I found the actual mm -hmm. problem. Turns out my lifter, this hardened lower section of the lifter failed and it probably doubled up and pushed that valve open a little bit too far making contact with the piston which caused it to snap off the uh yeah dang <clears throat> so this lifter which, let me get this one out. You can see it has like a hardened tip where that line is. And it literally broke right on that line. And it probably stuck the valve open long enough for the piston to make contact, which broke the valve head off and ended up puncturing a hole right through the piston, right through the cylinder head, and completely trash the motor. All for a simple lifter problem. So, I'm pretty sure I am gonna start over with a completely different engine because everything in this is probably pretty trash. Uh, I actually found this too back here. The Rear cylinder has chunks of K2 
cast sitting in here. So I think when the valve broke the cylinder head, it actually threw chunks of metal through the intake manifold, which made it way, its way into this cylinder. And I'm guessing probably some of those cylinders over there are gonna have chunks and debris in them. I've had some issues with this motor in the past. One other time, I actually, this motor should have been junk the day this happened, but I actually lost an exhaust valve on these closed chamber heads because I put these on one day when we were drag racing it, oh, 17, 18 years ago, thinking that this is what I needed to get me a little bit more power was the closed chamber. And it ended up running about the same quarter mile time, but on the fifth run, the uh, exhaust valve actually broke off on the track. It managed to get lodged in the hole and only put a nick on the piston, which I believe is cylinder two on this side that actually has the nick in the piston from when this happened. And somehow I managed to drive it all the way home with it misfiring and put it back together with just the old cylinder heads back on it that I had modified pretty heavily. So, yeah, what a crappy deal. Valve lifter decided to be the actual destroyer of my engine. So, I highly doubt this came second. I'm pretty sure this came first. My guess is that because the lifter board got stuck, my guess is that the valve got pushed open, stayed open long enough once this cracked, because I can't get the lifter out, that the piston came up and tipped that valve a little bit, and all it took was a couple hits, because it was probably, I mean, I was wide open when it shut off. I don't even know, over 6,000 RPM. Right, right around 6,000 RPM is when it actually failed. So just as I suspected when I got this head off, you can see the debris that went up through the intake when this thing exploded. So, and yeah, from here you can see the cam is actually damaged. Um, the lifter totally messed that up. Um, turn it so you can see that crack better. You can see right on the line and it just splits. I don't know how good the light is there. But yeah, this here are the little marks where the exhaust valve had dropped, you know, 18 years ago. And I've been running it ever since. It hit the piston like four times and somehow the head of the valve managed to get stuck in the head. And I drove from Earlville back to Dubuque, which is like 35, 40 miles on the highway. And was able to just put the 6X heads back on and yeah, run it again for quite a few years. So this, this has actually been together for probably five years with the different rocker arms and everything on it. So it really was just the, the lifter decided to fail. It probably got pushed up into the point where it gets stuck because right there I can't get it up any higher. And so the valve got hit and Boom, shattered it. Destroyed the entire engine, so, and the block. So the cam's junk, the head's junk, the lifters are junk, pistons are junk, and the block over here has a big split right down the bore. So let me see if I can get a light closer here. Yeah, you can see there's a big crack running vertically down the cylinder wall besides the fact that I let it sit for a year and it's filled with rust. So I pulled the timing cover off and I heard something clank and check out my gear drives. The, uh, the link bar between my two gear drives is completely toasted. It uh, chewed that side completely off. So that was another problem waiting to happen. I'm surprised it didn't really wear the case or the cover too bad. Pretty, what I would consider probably normal marks from having the, the gear drives in there. But yeah, we won't be reusing those either. So those are junk also. 
So I went ahead and pulled the cam out after I got my gear drives off and found those broken. This is what happened to that lifter. You can actually see a crack right down the surface of it. And so this is the cam lobe. It looks perfect almost all the way around except for where those scratches are. So pretty sure this failure, a chunk of this metal when it came off, um, ground against the cam and then got stuck between the high profile of the lobe and the base of the lifter which would have gave me a little bit too much lift because these valves were pretty close from hitting anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the original failure that caused the valve to break off. Uh, like I said, I've been running this cam and lifter. It's actually a comp cams. Um, I bought the full kit with the valve springs, the camshaft, and the lifters all together so they were a match set. So pretty sure I just got a bad lifter. But finding the gear drives trashed in pieces, you can see how uh, melted that's been rubbing on the crank for a long time. And maybe this was kind of the noise. I did hear a strange noise that I couldn't put my finger on. And maybe it was the gear drives rubbing on the front of the block here, bouncing around between the timing cover and the block. Once the, the link bar broke, the gears would have kind of been separated out quite a bit. So pretty much everything so far is junk. I don't see much that I can reuse with the exception of the the harmonic balancer, which has got some rust on it, the pulleys, and the oil pan. Everything else is probably going to end up in the junk pile. So, sad. Well, no surprise here. I got the oil pan off, and obviously you can see all kinds of debris. And here's a chunk of the piston. Uh, you can see up inside the windage tray. There's more chunks of piston. Ooh, actually that one got lodged in there. The crank did hit that and lodge a chunk of piston into the windage tray. But I still think that should be fine. Obviously you have to check clearance again if I reuse it, but. So the bottom end is probably okay. Rods and the crank and everything. But like I said, they were ground 30-30. It has stock cast iron rods with ARP bolts. Nothing special there. Um, yeah, more than likely, we're going to come up with a completely different engine and start over. So, well, with the complete teardown, you can see the chunk of piston stuck in the windage tray here. I'll have to get that dislodged. Um, this is the upper bearing. You can see a little bit of pounding here, but overall, it doesn't look terrible. There's a little bit of debris that was going through there, which might have been the, the gear drives that fell apart. Um, the rest of the bottom end probably is okay. I did see a couple little marks on the rod where some debris hit the side of it as it was spinning around. However, I don't see any cracks or any bend in the rod. Um, I definitely want to check this one really good because that's the one that hit the, the valve. But the rest of them I'm sure are fine and I'm sure the crank would be reusable. So if I wanted to reuse any parts, I could probably reuse the crank and the rods with ARP bolts, the oil pan and windage tray. And that's about it. The rest of it's pretty much trashed. Um, I could obviously get the same cam and reuse the valve springs with different valves so that way they would clear the rocker arms, but I don't know. For, uh, for what this costs to put back together, I'm not sure that I'm going to keep it Pontiac. I think I see an LS in the future. It would weigh less, and it would cost less, and it would probably produce more power, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. 
So I'd like you to thank you for watching and uh, let me know down in the comments section what you think. Should I rebuild the Pontiac engine and keep the Pontiac a Pontiac? Or should I go for the less expensive, more powerful option and just build an LS for it and be done? Um, either way you look at it, this is expensive. Uh, no matter what, the engine's pretty trashed. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.